Glenn's love for sports came from his father, and competition was a constant with his brothers and cousins. Glenn's determination to compete established him as a leader on sports teams and in school with his classmates. In our family, uh, basically the first six kids are a year and a half apart. Each one was a year and a half apart. And we played, when we weren't playing against uh, something in school and we were at home, we played basketball. When, when all winter, we would play basketball every time. We would basically play horse. It's a basketball game of competition. And so, you know, I had a brother that a year and a half older, a brother a year and a half uh, younger, but I always wanted to beat my older brother, and he was pretty good at it. Yeah, Roger and Glenn would, you know, and Stephen were, uh, you know, they were closest in age, and so uh, at that time on the farm, so the uh, good rivalry with there, but then when the cousins come over, then there was even more rivalry, cousins against cousins. And when we played baseball, we had a game called workup. So it was really important that you hit the ball, get to the bases, don't get out. And we took it really seri seriously. My dad always pitched those games. We had a backstop, so we could, we could um, uh, didn't worry, worry about a catcher too much. If, you, if he tossed the ball in and you missed it, you picked up the ball and threw, and threw it back. My dad even had put in a baseball home plate so we had a permanent home plate there, but it usually only had two bats. <laughs> so you learned to swing, it were a little on the heavy side, and maybe not everybody uh, would have a very fancy glove, but uh, uh, we, did, we always did things together because that's the only way you could play games. And my dad loved sports, and so almost every night after we got the chores done, we played some type of sports. My dad was the pitcher, and us boys uh, were the batters. Or we would play football and, and, and do the same things. It was always touch football, but we played, and uh, the little ones played with the big kids as well. And we had the big uh, area around the buildings, open area. So about a couple of weeks before school would start, we would start on football. And, and uh, we would practice, we'd have neighbor kids over our, our place, we'd play football and, uh, and get ready for school. Uh, played football, you had a break between a uh, week between football and basketball, and then you played basketball. And you had maybe about two weeks in be after basketball that we had uh, track. Um, and then I was out for track, played that. I did all the, all the short races, the, the 100 yard dash, the, the low hurdles, anything like that is what I ran. And then you played baseball, but it was different. It wasn't the school team, it was the community. Um, say eighth graders and ninth graders had a team and you played the towns, the other towns. So. And by the time he got done with that, it was football. It was a, a football season. We would go to all the games, come free games, when Roger was playing and Glenn were playing there. And uh, us, I was in elementary still. Uh, we would play at the halftime. Us kids would come out there and we'd get to do some. But my dad went to every game. Uh, they would, we would drive to the games and. Uh, in other towns, but he never missed those football games and basketball games. I remember a couple of things that when I was in junior high that probably set me up for the future. When I was in the seventh grade, we had our uh, teacher and he said, I'm going to divide you up into teams. And the way I'm going to divide you up, we're going to do about uh, some tests. So the tests were pull-ups, sit-ups, jumping, length of jump. They're all physical things that you would do. And I'm gonna keep track of them and see how well you do. And the ones that do the best will be the captains of the teams and they'll get to select the players. So I listened and observed uh, kind of what he said. 
and decided that I would always be about the last one to take the test. And so when they had pull-ups, I knew who had the most pull-ups. And in my mind, I would say, I have to do one more than that one. And once you put that in your mind and you know where you have to go, I did that. So, so when we were done, he said, these kids will be the captains. And of course, we were, I was a seventh grader and they were eighth graders. So five of the six that were picked were eighth graders. And I was the only seventh grader that was picked to be the captain. When we chose the players, of course, I knew the seventh graders really well. And those guys knew the eighth graders really well. So as we were picking, I, they divided up the eighth graders by their five different captains. I was able to pick off first the top seventh graders. And when you subdivide the, the, the eighth graders into that group, actually the seventh graders, since they were the best um, physically kids, were better. Now, that was important because as a seventh grader, I picked a team. Every FIAD, we would compete doing some team things. And we could beat, we could beat any team. The seventh graders could beat any team because I had the top kids all in, in my group. I say that because I think it was important. The school and the classmates all recognized that Glenn was in charge of something that was better than the eighth graders and his team always won. And I think it gives you a, a sense. Always after that, it gave me the advantage of being like the class president because of the expectation or when we got to the teams, like the junior high team, to be the captain was just kind of like, Glenn's gonna be the captain. And I think that kind of set me up for a lot of things in life, is the expectations that I would be the leader. And I had that expectations of myself. When we played football, it was different. I was a quarterback and, and I would call the plays. The coach didn't call the plays. It wasn't, he just said, this is the game plan. You call the plays. And uh, so that was another form of leadership that I had that the other, other uh, kids didn't have. When we went out for track, of course I was older, but I think I was, yeah, I was a freshman at the track. We had all the different things you could run, the, the 100 yard dash, the 220, but you know, I took, and figured out which ones I was the best in, the ones I could beat. And then those, those are the ones I ran. I wanted to win. So competitiveness was almost in everything. I, I, uh, and I can't tell you other than that it, it made me feel good. I never bragged about it. It wasn't that I told other kids, but it was important to me that I knew that that I could do as well as uh, anyone else. Basketball was played year-round on the Taylor Farm, but the court wasn't always the same and presented some creative challenges. Uh, we had two basketball courts. We had one outside, uh, so it was all gravel. That was a little challenge to play on. And because uh, once we would bale the hay or, and put it up, the hayloft was completely filled, so we couldn't play up there until we got enough of that was the first area we would try to empty out. But uh, some of the games outside were in rather cold weather. The ground was frozen and we'd play out there, but horse was a very common game uh, we would play. And then once we got enough of the hay up at the hayloft that we could just build an outside wall around the area and stack those bales up, then we had an open area in the middle. And then we could play up there. It was lit by one light bulb, so it was... <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, like probably a 60 or 100 watt bulb, and that was all the lighting we had. There was an oats bin on one side, so the right side, your side shots from the right were a lot shorter. On the left side, you could go out quite a ways. Uh, the rules were too, if the ball bounced over the hay wall that we built around the outside edge, 
and went down into where the um, uh, cows would just stay in the cold weather. Yeah, it was a lot of manure. Whoever touched it last had to go down and get it <laughs> and climb down there and uh, find that, uh, get the ball, clean it off, climb back up the ladder, and uh, we get the game started again. So as, as the hay got less and less, more often the ball went over the edge. But that was part of the rules. Whoever touched it last had to go get, climb down there and wade out into the manure and get it. Springtime was always the challenge, too. Manure would get nice and muddy and soft, and you'd have your overshoes on, and you'd be walking out there, and you'd step, and you'd lift up your foot, and your boot and shoes stayed. And so then you're balancing yourself on one foot, trying to get it, get your foot back in without stepping into uh, the muck, <laughs> is what it was. We had a barn that on one part went from the ceiling to the floor. And that was where you brought in the hay and it came along and you pulled the thing and it was loose hay and it would fall. And you piled it from the floor up then you fed cattle on this side, you fed dairy cattle on that side, and stuff like that. But on the front of the barn, it was they had the second floor. And on that, we always put straw, the hay being for eating, the straw being for bedding. And so we filled that up to the t thing. And the goal was, as you start using the straw, but eventually you'd work in the basket was on the thing and you'd work a little space. So at first our court, <laughs> the court was like this here because that's all the room you had and, and you moved it. And we shoveled some and we laid it on top of the hay wherever we could and we had some, we made a kind of an artificial place where we put it. And, but we started out this time. But eventually you could get back for a long shot uh, in the barn, so it's halfway back on the barn. So it's quite a ways and stuff like this here. You, we made a court, and eventually you got towards the end. You made the walls out of the straw, you made a court, and stuff like this here. But what Larry is saying, what Larry is saying is that it's an old barn, and lots of stuff happened, and sometimes when you jump up really high, you come down, you go right through the floor, you know, take out the, take out the rotten uh, board, well, you know, we we're kids, so you take another board, and you never had one that fit. So you kind of put one over the hole, and it would be, you know, a quarter of an inch or a half an inch taller and stuff like this here. And, you know, for years, but we knew our floor. And so, I mean, you didn't dribble the ball over the thing where the thing was crooked because the ball would go woo -woo, that way and stuff like this here. But in the heat of everything, who knows what was going to happen. So we played, we played basketball, and we had, my cousins lived right across the road. So not only did we have us kids, but we had the Kratz kids. So that's why it was always, we had lots of kids, you know, there, and we could have little teams and stuff like that. And it was probably, you know, the three on three or four on four and, and stuff like this. There. And you made the little guys, you never give them the ball, but they were on your team, <laughs> stuff like that. But so we had lots of uh, kids. The um, then we had you have neighbor kids on farms and stuff with some of those kids. Going. But he's right. He's right. He's right. But the one thing, if you played a horse, you could get around all of that because you you found your spot and you shot over your head. You did long push shots. You did whatever it, it could be. But he's right. <laughs> I don't know, and you never fixed those. I don't know, I mean, we those places were there and we played around them, I guess. When we would play with our cousins games, it, it was always, uh, you wanted to win, and uh, we'd play hard and there'd be rivalries. Are they out, were they safe? And, you know, everybody would debate it, but uh, not in a nasty way, but we would just have fun. Uh, doing things together. And uh, even in the wintertime, having snowball fights, uh, it would be, everybody would uh, do their thing and sneak up on each other and let them have it <laughs> whenever you could.